Before the United States and the Soviet Union put a man on the moon, they sent missions with live animals to outer space. Neither nation would send humans before ensuring they could do it safely. Since then, many strange objects have been taken into space, one of which is the detailed secondary objective 469, also known as FRED, or the Phantom Torso. FRED was a three-foot-high, 95-pound mock-up of an average male body. It consisted of an actual human skull and torso filled with artificial organs and skin composed of unique materials that resembled authentic human tissue. The skull was equipped with a highly advanced and sensible radiation monitoring system assembled with hundreds of sensors to measure the amount of radiation astronauts would be exposed to in space. Although FRED provoked divisive reactions due to its ethical implications, the peculiar object quickly became an indispensable instrument for NASA in the 1990s. Human Cadavers Long before Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin was launched into outer space aboard the Vostok 1 spacecraft in 1961, the Soviet Union sent smaller mammals to analyze how they would react to the variables of life in space. The United States soon followed. Test animals became vital in studying the survivability rates in space flights. The advances in bioastronautics were possible due to the apes, monkeys, rats, cats, dogs, and other mammals launched into orbit to understand the effects of radiation and microgravity on living things. Other animals, such as birds, reptiles, amphibians, and even insects would also be used for decades to come. Although the intelligence gathered was valuable and paved the way for future missions, the dangers of partial exposure to space radiation and the problems it could generate on humans alarmed NASA. As construction of what would later become the International Space Station began in the 1980s, the possibility of astronauts spending months or even years in outer space suddenly became a pressing matter. NASA wanted to gather the most accurate data on the effects of radiation penetrating the human body. Eventually, animals were not enough to provide reliable information concerning human physical behavior. The biomechanics of the human body, bone structure, density, and even physical stresses put onto specific body parts were not comparable to other mammals. Direct experimentation with astronauts was never considered due to ethical and political concerns, so NASA resorted to more creative methods. When Keith Cowling from Space Ref asked NASA about the matter in the early 2000s, their public affairs division replied by saying, quote, Human cadavers have been used as part of NASA's testing protocol. NASA is sensitive to the issues involved in using post-mortem human subjects to test its systems. Human cadavers are rarely used in testing, and only when it's determined that crash test dummies and mathematical models could not provide the information necessary to ensure the safety of the crew. NASA was inquired about the issue of mannequins not providing enough information as to how a human may respond to certain injuries, and they responded, quote, In limited cases, post-mortem human subject tests may be performed when insufficient data are available from simulations that use dummies or from mathematical modeling of the human body responses. This is particularly critical where the dynamic responses of internal organs and soft tissue must be evaluated. And that's where the detailed secondary objective 469 came in, better known by the astronauts as FRED, or the Phantom Torso. Phantom Torso The Phantom Torso was a 95-pound, 3-foot-high mock-up of a human body. It consisted of a real human skull and torso. Beneath a layer of artificial, non-flammable, no-mech skin, Fred also had artificial human organs like a brain, heart, colon, thyroid, and lungs. Each body part was made of a special plastic that closely matched the typical density of human tissue. NASA stated that this unique piece of hardware was created to, quote, measure organ dose levels of ionizing radiation and is equivalent in height and weight to an average adult male. Following the agency's official description, the phantom torso was divided into 34 one-inch thick segments that weighed 90 pounds. The 34 segments were grouped into three larger sections consisting of the chest, abdomen, and head. All were connected by a series of pins and holes and encased in a custom-made Nomex suit to keep them together. Each of the 34 bone sections had vertical drill holes that held dosimeter package sensors. The Nomex suit had two detectors to measure the skin's radiation. A dosimeter package consisted of thermoluminescent measurement devices and a plastic nuclear track detector. Overall, the Phantom Torso contained more than 300 detectors to analyze the radiobiological impact and other data. NASA's Experiment Information Branch briefly described the Phantom Torso's objectives in the Life Sciences Data Archive. It specified, quote, The primary risk to long-duration spaceflight crew members is radiation-induced cancers. 
One of the main obstacles in assessing radiation risk in manned spaceflight is related to the estimation of organ-level radiation dose equivalent. Currently, both experimental and operational methods for assessing radiation dose are limited to the measurement of skin dose. Organ-level dose is approximated only by calculations using the radiation environment model and the appropriate radiation transport. The Phantom Torso aimed to provide the necessary depth dose equivalents with the help of other radiation instrumentation, which would be assembled by the crew while in orbit. Dr. Gautam Badwar, the study's leading investigator at the Johnson Space Center, said Fred was explicitly designed for three objectives. Quote, First, it will determine the distribution of radiation doses inside the human body at various tissues and organs. Second, it will provide a way to correlate these doses to measurements made on the skin. Third, the Phantom will help check the accuracy of models that predict how radiation moves through the body. During an interview with the New York Times, David Stewart Nuchtway, a radiation expert at NASA's Johnson Space Center, added, quote, The idea is to give the astronauts a more accurate assessment of the cancer risks from space radiation. Radiation Radiation in space would be collected via three pieces of hardware. The phantom torso, a charged particle directional spectrometer, and a tissue-equivalent proportional counter. Once assembled at the International Space Station, the Phantom Torso and the other two pieces of hardware would be activated and begin collecting data without the intervention of a space crew. The information obtained would be downloaded every week to the onboard computers at the space station and sent immediately to Earth. Fred would analyze three types of radiation. The first was the galactic cosmic rays, made up of atoms accelerated by supernova explosions outside the solar system. Dr. Badwar explained that these rays could be lethal because as the charge increases, quote, the amount of energy that the particle can deposit in tissue increases as well. The second type of analyzed radiation would be protons coming directly from the sun. Although their charge is not as powerful as that of the cosmic rays, they can be lethal if they come packed together as solar flares. The last type of radiation that would be analyzed by the phantom torso was the Van Allen belts. These belts surround the Earth and are made up of decayed products from cosmic ray interactions with the planet's magnetic field. This trapped radiation often finds its way confined to an area near the coasts of Brazil. The space station passes through the area approximately five times a day. Based on data obtained from the phantom torso, NASA scientists would be able to detect how much radiation reached an astronaut's internal organs and pinpoint the precise areas where radiation affected the most. A human skeleton in space. The Phantom Torso was part of two secret space missions during 1989 and 1990. Its first time in space was during a Defense Department flight in August of 1989, but NASA didn't announce it until after a second secret mission that ended in March the following year. The decision to send the Phantom Torso aboard the five-day Discovery mission was because the spaceship was planned to ascend 380 miles, the highest a shuttle had ever reached. The actual torso was not used during initial testing, but the crews of the Columbia and Discovery shuttles seemed to have fun with it. During one of the mission's briefings, NASA spokesman Brian Welch once said, quote, It's not like it's hooked there staring at people. During an interview with Vice News, astronaut Mike Mullane recalled how he pranked various crew members with the phantom skull during the mission. He recounted that one day, he got into a sleeping bag and hid his head while another member taped the skull on top of the bag. With his arms swinging through the armholes on the sides of his sleeping bag, he went to the shuttle's upper deck and startled the unsuspecting crew. Malin then stuffed the phantom torso and the sleeping bag in the toilet seat to tease his fellow crew members. With the initial data gathered from several missions, NASA concluded that 80% of organ biological doses in the International Space Station came directly from galactic cosmic rays, and that protons were attenuated by the spacecraft and the astronaut's skin. The average quality factor determined was about 2.6 aboard the space station, and preliminary data concluded that the astronaut's risk of getting cancer from radiation exposure was extremely low behind the safety of the spacecraft. Fred's job was done. Like, comment, and subscribe to watch more content related to the secrets of space technology. And tell us in the comments below what you think about the Phantom Torso.